This is the DJI Mavic 3 and it'll soon be joined by a new sibling, the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Because rumors have started to come in thick and fast that there's going to be yet another DJI Mavic 3 to be released, the Mavic 3 Pro, with an additional 3x camera included. And in this video I'm going to tell you my predictions for why the DJI Mavic 3 Pro is going to be the perfect storytelling drone. So I've done a number of tests to confirm this. Now I must admit when I first heard about the DJI Mavic 3 Pro I thought well I don't need a 3x camera, I really don't. It's a drone, I want to take nice wide shots. For that I've got the Hasselblad cam camera at the bottom here, micro four thirds sensor, 24mm focal length, beautiful. Then I've got the 7x camera at the top, it's a half inch sensor, debatably not usable for everything, but you get 162mm focal length, you can get nice parallax effects and compression. So you've got that nice versatility between these two. Why do I need a, a camera that's in the middle between these two? But then I thought, well, let's test it. Because what I can do with this drone, the Mavic 3, is I can use the Hasselblad at the bottom and apply three times digital zoom to it. Now the results aren't gonna be as good as a camera that can record in native three times. Of course it's not. It's gonna be grainy and horrible, and that's why I never use three times magnification. But it's gonna give me an idea of how I can compose shots, what sort of, usability that's going to create for me. So I've gone to a number of locations including the famous white cliffs of Beachy Heads. Really try to focus on using the three times magnification which I never normally do but I thought let's give it a go. See what the results are. See what a what's a 60 70 millimeter lens on a drone can produce and see what are the results and I was quite staggered by it. I really didn't expect this but it does open up completely new avenues. And I'm going to share those results with you. I'm going to show you some of the footage. And you can see what you think about it yourselves. Obviously, leave your thoughts in the comments below if you disagree or agree with me. But I really think that that camera is going to make this a perfect storytelling drone. And you'll see why. Okay, so let's start. So in the following examples are what I titled The Story of Two Lighthouses, and you'll see why. So if we take this first reveal shot, it's we've got cliffs. We've got a lighthouse in the foreground, red and white very famous lighthouse at Beachy Head and that's pretty much it. That's the story you're telling. There's, there's not much else in this clip. If we play this again at three times magnification it's a completely different scene because we can see a lighthouse in the distance and a lighthouse in the foreground. So now it's actually become a story of two lighthouses not just one and that's kind of the beauty with the three times magnification is that because you get more compression you can hone in the audience's attention onto different subjects better than you can with a wider view. A wide view is great for establishing a scene and showing where you are, but if you're trying to tell a story and you're trying to get the attention on a certain subject or a certain number of subjects, that compression can be very, very useful. That lighthouse in the distance is actually brought forward in the image. That's the beauty of this. Now what I had to do in this case is fly further away from the subject because you get more compression in order for that lighthouse to be the same size in the foreground you have to fly further away. That's kind of how the whole compression thing works. So in the next example we've got a simple orbit around the, uh, the same lighthouse and again you can see how that second lighthouse in the distance is brought forward in the image. It's become more relevant, it's actually become interesting and part of the story. In the one times magnification it's just completely lost. You can't see it, it's not part of the scene, but at the bottom it's there and it's relevant. So in this clip I'm using some low level cloud and fog to add a bit of mystery to the image and again it just seems more effective at three times. Um, the image is more filled with the relevant parts, the clouds, the cliffs, the two lighthouses. And as in the last example, that second lighthouse in the distance is just brought forward in the image and it's brought more to the attention to the audience. So in this example, I'm doing another orbit of the subjects and obviously in the three times example, I'm flying further away in order to keep that subject the same size. And the thing that's interesting here is there are two things that are interesting. First of all, the reveal of that cliff end or cliff head down here seems less rotational. It doesn't feel like you're flying around the um, the lighthouse. It just feels like you're, it just feels more like a reveal. It's just, it's just not so much focus on I'm flying around a lighthouse. It's about I'm revealing something in the distance. And the second thing that's become apparent at this point to me is that the footage you get with the three times camera just seems less drony. That's really interesting because when you fly these things day in day out and a lot of you will probably agree and you watch things on television, documentaries, films, um, programs, 
you can spot drone footage from a mile away. You'll always know that that's a drone footage, that's drone footage, because there's a certain look that that kind of footage has. But with the footage you can obtain with a 50, 60, 70 millimeter equivalent lens, you don't really feel like you're looking at drone footage anymore. It just looks more immersive, more dramatic, and more of a story. And that's quite interesting because it just opens up new avenues with what you can do with drones. So the following is another classic sort of uh, roads with a car driving down it to maybe lead you into the scene and then you're flying out and opening the scene up and just revealing the location. This is a classic thing we've seen on films and documentaries all over the place. But if you look at the three times example, you just get more focus kept on that road. So if you're trying to keep attention on a car, maybe driving into the distance or whatever, whilst revealing the location, that allows you to achieve that without kind of opening things up too much and detracting away from part of the story, which might be that car. So you're kind of keeping attention on that. So the next clip, if you were filming people on top of the cliffs, the way that the three times lens reveals the scene keeps attention on that cliff top a little bit longer than the one times. Now, on the other hand, the one times does uh, allow you to reveal the surrounding area and the um, lighthouse quicker. So it, it's debatable which one's better. I mean, in some cases, a wider camera is obviously obviously better. It's better at showing the scene and just showing a nice wide view. So now that I've created footage with the Hasselblad 24 millimeter and the pretend three times camera that we'd have available on the Mavic 3 Pro. I'm going to show you how back-to-back -back those scenes would look and what the different feels would be like. So have a look at this. So going to another location, this is a pier with a lighthouse at the end and I've filmed this in a manner that the lighthouse is the same size in both clips but one is three times and one's the 24 millimeter one times. And you can see what difference this makes. The focus in the one times is basically you've got a pier and a seaside town. In the second footage, you can see you're basically just telling a story of a pier and a lot of features of that pier are just brought forward a lot. So you've got that sign, Folkestone, basically the town where this was filmed, is just more relevant and a lot more clearer. If people were walking down this, they would be clearer. So it's this is more of a story of a pier as opposed to a pier in a town. And that's the difference between those two lenses in this case. The other thing you notice with this kind of shot is the parallax effect. So you get a lot more parallax with the three times. You'd expect that. You'd get even more with the seven times. But if that's an effect you want, then the three, three times will open that up to you. With this example of this tower and a kind of reveal shot, again, as with the lighthouse earlier, you can kind of create this reveal without it looking like a drone flying around it. It just feels more almost like a camera zooming in or it doesn't feel like you're flying it just feels like the camera is just naturally moving and transporting you through the scene it's very hard to explain it but you can kind of see the difference that it makes it just doesn't look like drone footage that's that's all i can say it just that sort of focal length doesn't look like drone footage and i love that because we've all been doing drone footage for years and we want something new so there you go. So this example is quite interesting it's a castle it's a beautiful castle with a nice moat around it now, in some cases, it would be nice to have a wide shot and to show the surroundings. But in this case, because the backdrop was quite bland, quite boring, the light was very bleachy, the sky was quite boring, so that backdrop doesn't really add much into it. So the three times camera does kind of keep things in focus. It kind of focuses you on the castle with that mode, all the things you want to see, and that's the story you're telling without things being distracting. In addition, in some cases, you might not be able to fly too close to the subject. Some castles, for example, the um, groups that manage these castles don't like you flying drones over their sites. So three times you'd be able to take that footage without having to get too close to it and pissing anyone off. This last example is quite good as well because we're doing the same kind of drone move, but in the one times wider shot, you can kind of see the car park in the background and you might not want the car park in there. No one wants to see a castle with a car park. In the three times zoom version, that car park is kept out of the scene until right at the end. And that makes it a bit more interesting, a bit more pleasing to the eye.
So I hope you found this useful and hopefully it's answered your questions on whether the three times camera is relevant and might be interesting to you. It's certainly interesting to me. I've been blown away by what difference it can make even with this sort of low quality. So I'll be keeping my eyes out for any news about the Mavic 3 Pro. Remember it is just speculation at the moment. So the specs could change, all the details could change, but based on the theoretical idea of a Mavic 3 with a three times camera on it, it's certainly interesting and it's something that I will probably consider unless it's stupid money. So we'll keep our eyes peeled. I'll let you know anything I find out, uh, new content coming all the time. Remember to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And until next time, see you soon and stay safe. Bye-bye.